Where streams of dirty meltwater leave the edge of the glacier, they here and there deposit gravel, sand, and silt in nearly level beds. Extensions of these deposits, called outwash plains or terraces, sometimes cover broad valley bottoms. Their nearly level bedding and their flat surfaces are often interrupted with the scattering of depressions, some dry and others containing bogs or even lakes. These kettles, as they are called, are the result of residual ice blocks, which when finally melted, leave depressions. In other places, these streams of meltwater eroded their channels, producing deeply incised spillways. These old spillways may often be traced for long distances. When an ice front halts and stagnates for a time, the coarse gravels and sands carried down by the water accumulate in irregular piles that rise to considerable heights, their sides buttressed by the ice. When the glacier resumes its retreat, they collapse, forming high, sandy, conical mounds that are called cames. Cames consist of chaotic beds of sand and gravel. Occasionally, successive cames form an extended ridge of mounds called a cane terrace. The cames were prone to settling down. They didn't fancy travel. So when the eyes pulled out, they stayed. Big sand hills full of gravel. I don't know much about this ice age, but it's sure fine gravel for road building. Now, if a glacier brought this whole road down here, well, it deserves a bonus. Hey, what do I call for another load? Oh, well, I'll find out. Meltwater flows over the glacier and finds its way through tunnels beneath the melting ice. It deposits gravel and sand in these sinuous passages, which when the ice retreats, remain as meandering ridges called eskers. They stand up to a hundred feet in height and can wander, as some of the longest ones do, for tens and even hundreds of miles across the land. Like the canes, they are valuable sources of sand and gravel. The great sheets of glacial ice formed effective dams that blocked the natural drainage routes through much of the continent. As a result, many high-level glacial lakes were formed when the ice was melting. Throughout the long period during which the ice was receding, the configuration of the glacial lakes and drainage channels often shifted. But when a lake remained stable for some time, Wave action built gravel beaches and cut terraces terminating in bluffs around its shores. The rhythmic, abrasive action of the waves rounded the pebbles and evenly graded the gravel of these ancient beaches that stand up as smooth strands with flat tops. In these ancient lakes, sand and silt settled out to form deltas, which after the lakes drained, remain as silty lake plains. These give way further out in the lake basins to clay plains. During the summers when the glaciers were melting and the spillways active, bringing in a fresh supply of sediments, the lakes were constantly churned by currents. The larger particles settle first to the bottom, forming these coarser and light-colored silty layers. Each year, winter's return halted the streams of meltwater, and the lakes became still. Beneath their carapace of winter ice, 
The finer clay particles then settle from the water to form dark clay layers overlying the lighter bands of silt. This process often continued for many years, producing stratified beds called varved clays that are now found on the flat plains that once lay beneath lakes. The annual couplets of these varved clays are a means of counting the years needed for their formation. While many of these great post-glacial lakes have shrunk or vanished, countless others persist. Carved by the movement of ice over the bedrock of the Canadian Shield, uncounted thousands, perhaps millions of these deep, clear lakes still lie scattered over northern Canada and other glaciated lands, evidence on the trail of the retreating ice. I scooped out walls upon the shield, this force called glaciation. And doing so unwittingly encouraged red creation. The ice has gone, retreated. What few remnants remain in mountains and the high Arctic await their final demise or rebirth to advance once more. Since 1940, the mean temperature of the world has indeed been falling. Many scientists are now predicting the coming of a new age of ice. But no one really knows. For the moment, we wait. Living in the trail of the glaciers, or perhaps in their future path. The glaciers have done their work and gone back from where they came. But who will run to welcome them if they come back again? The ice brought all these rocks some time ago, just dumped them down. It's gone now. Some say it's gone for good, but you gotta wonder. Could be, it's just gone back for another load. 